So welcome to Money's Designs. This is a live show with live people. Nothing in that in chat. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I'm working in Magical Dawn, a colouring book illustrated by Hannah Carlson. And this particular book I'm treating as if I was kind of... Um, <clears throat> I'm scratching colour in it, um, dry pigment, so uh, crayon, water-based crayon, water-based pencil, uh, a pastel, and I'm scratching the colour in, but I'm not activating it with water. Uh, so this will be good for a present for somebody if they didn't have any colours, um, or they didn't want to, didn't, they're not able to scratch colour. So you could do this and send it as a present with a water brush, and then they could just activate the colours and colour in. Um, it would be good if you're going on holiday on a long journey and you want, didn't want to take all your products with you. If you're at the beach, you certainly don't want to take your Neos because the sand will stick to them. So you could scratch the colour in. This is Neo Colour 2s. Uh, this is Graffiti Tint. I'll just pan out a little bit and you can see the page. Some really bright colours. Um, this is the Derwent pencils and they've just been scratched. Some quite strong, some quite pale. This is Ink Tense pencil and this is near colours I think. And this one, this one I filled completely. So this is with really strong colours. This one I've scratched a little bit of colour so when I get my damp brush I'll activate it to a little watercolour effect. So this should be quite soft. Um, this is pastel, again it's got tra uh, tracing paper because it's pastel it'll come off and once it's activated with a damp brush it won't, it'll be set like a watercolour so that'll be fine but until it's done it has to have protection because it'll just rub off onto the next page. This is Derwent Graffy Tint and again I've scratched a bit of colour and left an area so I can activate this colour and draw that up. So I'm going to have some really strong colours and then go into a watercolour effect. Uh, this is Prisma colour watercolour pencils, again scratch colour and then left to activate later. Near colour twos, a little bit of colour and some areas where it's going to be paler. This particular one, it's all been coloured, so every scrap is going to be really vivid in your face colours. Apart from the pearls, I've left completely white. So I can draw that really dark colour around everything and then everything will pop out. So I thought I would play with the graffiti tint for this next page and I'm trying to work in numerical order because I forget pages and they get neglected and I end up with books with lots of pages not done. So last year in this book I used the graffiti tint for this page. So scratched a bit of colour and then activated it with water. Uh, completely opposite to this page, same pencils, Derwent graffiti Tint pencils, but this is more of a, a grungy effect. It's not quite finished yet, they need a little bit more shadow and shade, um, but you can reel some nice shadows up and make it kind of really grungy, so the snow really pops out. So there's two ways to use these pencils. You can use them as a pencil and blend and make them really strong or you can make them quite quite water-based, watercolour effect, just with a little bit of grunge. Oops, so I'll pan back in and then we'll start on there. <clears throat> so I've picked out, uh, there's 24 colours in there, so I've picked out meadow number 10 because what I want to do is I want move the camera again sorry I want this to be pale and then this to be darker or I might do that the opposite because I've got storm I've got storm which is here and that's going to make the bronze um, if I was doing this in, in other pencils or crayons 
water-based, I would make that a gold crown. But because this is graffitin and they're grungy, I'm going to make it a bronze. And the bronze will then go to kind of um, an ivy colour, a green, and then it'll have the highlight on the end. I think that looks better. So we'll have a play. So I'm scratching a little bit of colour. I think I want this. I might do it solid colour, I think. We can get away with solid colour. Just very gently scratching the surface. Um, so it's quite easy to do if you've got poorly hands, this. Because you're just barely touching. You're just barely touching. Um, and then, of course, we have a, a, a berry. <clears throat> so we have a berry, and I think there's a port, which is a red berry. And there's a red berry, but I think I'm going to go for the port. They are kind of grungy, so you're not going to get vivid, bright colours. Um, but they will look different. So if I do all the cherries first, I don't get confused. the last one <coughs> so that may want to be a, a lighter color as well and because this is part of the the kind of crown I'm using number oh that's sage number 12 is sage I thought I picked out storm I think I put, oh no, stone was for the face, wasn't it? I think. Sometimes you have to have a bit of a play. Now, yes, I'll call, although this is called sage, it's a kind of a bit of a bronzy colour. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to do bronze. And just very gently. And I think I'm going to use that as well. I think. Now we do want an accent colour, so I think I might use a, a green in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. But I've got a little bit of something going on. And this is how you need to start sometimes. You can look at something for a long, oops, a long time. So the tips, I'm going to put a little bit of green in. And I'm just putting a very, very soft line. So there's no lines on this pencil because if there's no point. If there's no point on a pencil, it's all rounded, all little round facets or flat facets. You're not going to get any harsh lines. And I kind of like that for this particular style that I'm going for. Just scratch that little bit of colour in. And this leaf is probably going to be the same. I shall just wait till I finish because I think that looks quite nice. Um, <clears throat> so sage is the is that one. So the next one we've got is an ivy. So a scribbly bit of paper. So we've got the ivy next, and then we'll scratch the ivy next to that one. They're very similar, so we'll try the grey-green and we'll see what that one does. Now the grey-green I like as the kind of accent, so that's what I'm going to use this one for. So all the kind of leafy areas and then the other ones will be 
Sage. And then we can have a look at the hair. And again, you won't really know what it's going to do until you add, activate it with water. So. so the ivy will be here. And again, it looks very similar, but when you wet it, it will be different. So that's quite nice. And normally you would activate it with water and see what's happening, but of course we can't do that. Oh, well, welcome Mel, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Apologies for earlier. So this one is confused now. Ivy. I think this was Ivy. Yeah. Ivy is just slightly darker. So all this nice area in here is a mixture of the ivies and the greens to build out tone. And then I'm just having a bit of a play here. But we're not doing it full strength. We're just doing a little bit. So the grey green I think I did the same with the sage, didn't I? So I think we'll do all this first, because if I don't do all this first, I shall get very confused. And you don't always have to have all so much strong colour. You can go s stronger or just, just a little bit. Sorry, little barky pants. Come here, please, trouble. So we'll just fill the crown in a little bit so we know what bit we're doing. Apologies for barky pants. Never a video goes past um, and I think I'm touching 600 and you can still bark for England. And I think he's barked on every single one. <laughs> I think he's barked on every single one. So apologies for the monsters, but this is Monster City. Um, so I'll have to draw this because if I don't, I'll forget where I've been. <laughs> so just scratching a little bit of colour. And you need to be comfortable and in the right position, otherwise you get a stronger colour in one place than you would another. And I need a little bit of continuity. But if you want complete contrast, then work the way that you want. Your pencils will react however you use them. And there's nothing why you can't change the colour. Blend them together, put colour over top of colour. Do stronger colours, paler colours. A pencil is very versatile and these are really really nice pigments the really really good quality pigmented pencils these derwents and so you can get your money's worth out of it so as a tight yorkshire lass i like that i can be bold i can be soft 
I can mix together. They're very versatile. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was that one. So the next one I said was meadow was round the outside. The very soft pale one. The lightest green that's in the set. And of course, wouldn't we love 72 graphite tints? <laughs> but I don't think you need them. I think you can mix colours together. And when I make my little book of watercolours, I will be changing the colours. I'll be mixing different colours together to make quite a few. And of course we won't see what this is like until we activate it. But th this is a really good way to work if you wanted to um, perhaps... I think that was grey-green, wasn't it? No, that wasn't grey-green. That was ivy. That was ivy. Missed a little bit there. Ivy's just that little bit darker. And again, you can't tell until you've activated it. So I just need that pale one again. Is that one? And the next one is this one. So this is um, green grey number nine and that's going to be quite dark is that. And it's going to be a little bit of a contrast to that. And of course because these are gorgeous well pigmented watercolour pencils the, bl the brush will blend the two colours seamlessly together which is always nice just checking that sage which it is so oh. Sorry, I just... Out, please. Thank you. Come on, off we go. Sorry about that, guys. The bad boy, Suzanne's not here yet. The bad boy. The bad boy. We're working in Magical Dawn and this is the book that I'm scratching colour in and leaving it dry. Um, but I am recording this so this will be, this should be out either this evening or sometime tomorrow. Hopefully if we can get rid of the barks. Um, I think I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put the grey green on this bit just to make it a bit different. So this is the book that hopefully for the streamathon um I will be I will be using for the streamathon. And I will be activating it so you could do this if you're going on holiday or on a long trip or an aeroplane. You don't have to take anything else with you, just a water brush. And you've got hours and hours and hours of colouring. Um, I'm just trying to think what colour to do with that particular one. And I think I may have to do it the grey-green. I think that's going to be a nice contrast. And They just kind of glide on the page, so that's quite nice. So, what have we missed? I think that could be 
the hair colour behind, I think. But these are going to be flower colours. So flower colours are a little bit... Um, we've got purples and we've got a, a red red and we've got um, an autumn brown red and they're really the only flower colours we have we don't have any yellows the chestnut is mm, probably <coughs> a burnt orangey colour so we can go purple and blue that probably look quite good Or we could go um, I think it's hair though <coughs> I think that could be hair we could do that hair color and then that would leave us the, the brown colors for this kind of um, it's like smoke coming out of a mouth but we can't do it smoke colored so we need the purple, oh, excuse me, goodness me, I don't think this video is going to see the light of day. <laughs> Sorry guys. <coughs> oh dear. Oh Mel, I don't know about the streamathon, but if you go on, <coughs> excuse me, if you go on, um, um, musical Scrapper. If you Google mus musical scrapper dot blog stop blog dot com, it'll take you to Jean's website, and she has um, she has the list of whoever everybody's coming on all over the world. <coughs> we'll do. Excuse me. I haven't looked for a week or so, so. I'm not sure who else is on. I think I'm about midnight London Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and I think I'm on for a couple of hours, but I think if lots of people want to be on, we cut down to an hour so that everybody can get on at a certain time. But um, I'm planning to... This is the book that I've been working through. Um, scratching colour in but not activating it with a wet brush just leaving it dry so all the neos are dry <coughs> and then um, hopefully I'm going to really give it some strong work this next couple of weeks uh, because I'm in my new studio hopefully by the end of this week um, and I don't have my phone I don't know where my phone is I'll have to ask hubby for my phone um, so we have the um, the foundations and the the brick pillars so there's a little orangery being built uh, at the back so that I can be in there quiet and uh, it's a bit warm because this is this is a north facing little little room and it's freezing in here all the time hence the fire I have which is a little fan heater fan so it's very dry which is not a good idea when you have asthma <laughs> So hopefully we will have better light, I'll have more room um, and I'll probably be changing the videos as well so there'll be more of me on them <laughs> if I'm brave enough there's more of me on them and there'll be an over the shoulder kind of view so you can really see exactly how I do different things um, and there probably will be some water colouring um, and some landscapes and some oils and acrylics um, and a lot more digital because the hands are playing up so there'll be a lot more digital as well so the studio is going to allow me to have the two desks probably three desks where I work in a particular way on one desk and then I've got the tilted desk for the other artwork and easels out there and all sorts <clears throat> instead of having to put everything away I can kind of just leave it where it is and then get back to it so it's going to be a lot easier and of course I've got my new camera I have um, my new baby which um, I've had a bit of a play with Oopsie. so I used to use this little camera case for 
I've lost the dog. <laughs> He's gone. I used to use the cam the bag for all sorts of other things, but it seems to be handy for lots of things. So in here is my new baby. Pan out a bit, show you my new baby. Oopsie. It's an EOS 200D in white from Canon, and it's the lightest one. It's the lightest one, and it seems to work quite okay for me. And then I have a large, I'm too small. <laughs> I have the Tackstar microphone that fits over the top. So again, this camera will be on a tripod handy. This comes in a little bag. So this sits on top here. And so the, vo the, um, the volume and the, uh, the audio should be better quality. The camera will be better quality and also it's easy for me to hold as well uh, and I'm a bit worried that the art's going a bit south so I may have to just do photography so that was the other way to buy that and in the other little pouch is my Boya and I bought both because this one has a connector on it. This one will plug directly into your laptop. Oops, I don't know how that's happened. Oh, I haven't put it together yet, but it's little, little microphone clips, has a clip. But it has a very, very, very long cord. I think it's three metres. So the idea is I can use that when I'm at the other side of the studio, when I'm doing my filming of live oil paints or anything big uh, where I need to pan out and then I also have the other little baby because um, I couldn't resist is my little iRig love and this one clips on as well but the cord isn't as long and that one clips on so I've got lots and lots of new equipment for um, better quality videos but um, the stream will be the same the stream is always standard um, non HD because it's free um, so unfortunately the streams their quality will never go up too much although it's a bit better with this little microphone but this is for videos for uh, Bunny's Disabled Designs, which is the new um, show on the other side, and Bunny Bible Designs, uh, that's going to be a bit more as well. And also um, the Diet and Fitness, Bunny's Designs, Diet, Fitness, Health and Happiness, that will be with the correct camera um, because they better content when you're not live. Live is wonderful for interaction, um, but um, sometimes it's a little bit better quality for people to watch on YouTube and to watch again. Sometimes when the waffle's gone, you don't really want to watch it again. So sometimes it's just that bit nicer just to have pure 20 minutes of constant content and cut the waffle. So I'll zoom back in. Has anybody got any questions? Oh yes, yes Suzanne, that should be good. Now I don't know if I'm getting near the window. <laughs> but basically I've have oh I don't know how I've done that. Oh, I don't know how I did that. But basically I have Um, a brick wall and then I have I think four windows and I have a brick pillar and I have two windows and then I have a door 
and then I have two windows. So that's the plan of my orangery. So all along this brick wall will be my white cabinets with all my junk in. And I want to put my big table here, or possibly side by side. So my desk is here and my boards and my easels will be here. <laughs> and then the bunnies will be here. <laughs> the buns are going in there. And we may just have room for a sofa for everybody else to sit on. So the light should be back, but it's south facing now. Either that's going to be brilliant or it's going to be pants. I'm not sure, but I can always put blinds and, and unfortunately shut the sun out, but at least that room will be warm. At the moment, I'm this is south facing, directly south, so it should be warm. And it has a glass roof and we've got the, the roof and the roof lights, so they're all around in the roof. So the lighting should be perfectly even instead of in one way and not in another. So that should be better as well. The lighting should be better. Um, but at the moment I'm in a little room at little room in the front of the house which is directly north um, with a little window here and it's extremely cold. Now artists have a strange thing with light. Um, I once went to southern France and the light is out of this world. Uh, Devon Cornwall is supposed to be out of this world. Whitby and the East Coast, that's supposed to be out of this world for light. Um, I have a friend who is both the husband and the wife, both paint. The husband likes north facing light because it's not strong, but it's constant. And the wife prefers the southern brighter light, the warmer light when she paints. And their paintings are different because of the light. And so it's it, you have to do you have to choose which you like. Now I do like this north light, even when it's bright, it's just perfect. But it's just so cold in my little cottage. So hopefully this room should be warmer. Um, so and then I can get to all my things. That's the other thing. Everything I have is tucked away, and I have a bad memory. So if you can see it, normally you're going to use it. Uh, so that's another reason for that. So that all my things will be out and um, and when the camera's on things people can say oh we haven't seen that before or you can have requests and say can you get these things out instead of hiding them away. <laughs> and I have my huge tray with all my lovely pastels in. Now these are only cheapy pastels. These are my oil pastels and they're in this huge tray. Um, with all the other pastels and there's six there's, there's one drawer of oils and there's five drawers of pastel pe uh, pastels um, and again I don't use those as much so they can be out and handy and easy to get to so everything should be that little bit nicer to use and, and easier to get to so I'm quite liking these muted colours. They're not very bright. You can see the pink thing next to it. Um, and if I put yellow, you can see green. You know, they are really muted. They're lovely, soft, muted colours. Um, and that's the graphy tint. They really are very, very unusual. Oh yes, my little tray. I'll talk about my little tray at the end. <laughs> I love my little tray. My daughter was throwing it out. Um, and I, I find that um, I thought the cushion tray for colouring was brilliant in a car, on a train. But if you take this with it on top, because it has the ridges, they don't dig in your knee, and it raises it up a bit, so you sit up a bit straighter, and nothing rolls away because it's all got little pockets around it. In fact, I'll zoom out really quickly and show... Have a look, see if you can find this. And the camera, unfortunately, is hanging on for dear life. So if I move this out of the way, um, I, I've forgotten what we call this. I thought I'd put my Christmas beads round. 
Uh, then I realised I had the microphone, so it probably wasn't a good idea. I'll just take these out of the way. So I was trimming the tree one year and making things out of broken things and I twisted these and I put them around my neck so that I was messing about with the tree and my little children said, oh mummy you've got Christmas beads so they became my Christmas beads. <laughs> so this little tray, I think it's called a workstation, um, I've forgotten the word for it, I'll ask my husband to bring the phone, uh, but it means that this is what we call A4, so it's printer page. And it was really for um, cutting mats. And again, I haven't got one handy. I have one underneath here, but I haven't got a small one. I don't think I've got one handy. But the cutting mats fit here, and it's got the anti-slip. And that's because this is for um, modellers, for model railway shows. That's where you normally find these. Uh, but pencils and pens go in here. My little... Uh, you can fit longer things in here. I have um, pencil sharpeners in here. Little pots fit in. All sorts of things fit in or stand up. Um, so that means that when you put your pencils down, they don't roll everywhere like they do here. When they're in here, they don't roll around so much. So you can work with this section here. And it's on a slight incline, but your pencils are not going to go far if you didn't want to put them in here. I've been working on portrait or landscape. So I do like this little thing and I think it's called a workstation tray, I think, or a workstation. But it is a mod or a modeler's workstation. Um, and some of them have little pot holes for these little tins. Um, Umbro, I think Umbro make one as well, and it has little little holes, um, and then there's certain places to stick your brushes, um, and it's to stop your tins from falling over. And it's normally for people who model railway shows or small models. They they normally have them, but I think they sell them on Amazon for either ten or twenty pounds, depending on how posh you want one. Um, let me just see if anybody's got a link. I've forgotten what we call them. We looked them up last week, but I've forgotten. Um, again, I'm probably going to do a few videos on supplies. And uh, Sooty's in the doghouse, our cat, because he decided that um, he snuggled up with me this morning, which is always a bad thing, because you never know what mood he's in. Um, this is the big black cat that looks like this. This isn't him, but it is the spit of him. And bless him, he came foul, foul mood and uh, I was asleep and he just decided that he would like to eat me. <laughs> oh hi Kenny, welcome to Bunny's Designs, anybody else popping in? Uh, so I like I love the pit things and I like the fact that they do not kind of spill out everywhere as well. That's quite nice. And my camera is at a real strange angle because it's hanging on a light. <laughs> um, it's it's hanging on for dear life, bless it. So tomorrow they come back to put the lid and the glass and the frames onto the uh, little orangery. Oh yes, King God, I think the window's going to let a lot of light in. <laughs> oh, he's done worse, but he's just such a terror, and it wasn't a little one. I mean, he really did, all claws, all mouth, all claws, three times. You know, he really did want to tell me off. I shouted goodbye to my daughter, and he was obviously at that moment where he was just nodding off. Um, uh, but he is a bad-tempered little sausage. And he ran. He r runs upstairs like a puppy. He ran upstairs, snuggled, and said, "Please stroke me. Please stroke me like he does," because uh, he was knocked down as a kitten and he had, broke his jaw. So his jaw obviously hurts in this weather. And I was stroking his jaw, and he was nodding off, and everything was fine. And then my daughter went downstairs, and I thought, "I, sh I can't get up." I thought I had to shout her, and I obviously shouted, and I woke him up, and he wasn't a happy boy. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, thank you, Kenny. She says that it's a workstation for hobbyists, but they don't have this one. No, this one I bought for my daughter when she was a little girl. Um, because she used to play with plasticine and she still does make tiny little models. Um, and so she, it was brilliant for the plasticine because she used to put the different colours in it, it used to keep them all separate. <clears throat> and if you drop plasticine on a floor it gets bitty and dusty and things, whereas here it had no chance of doing that. So she used to mix all her colours and then she used to play. Uh, and then she was. Th I found it in the carrier in the in the bin liner, and I recognised it straight away in a big black bin liner. And I thought, no, no, you're not throwing that away. <laughs> so um, I do have another one, but I don't know where it is. Um, but I like the fact that if you wanted to cut things, I use it when I'm cutting things with this little small ruler which is about somewhere and my pencil case fits in quite nicely there as well so sometimes you can find some nice things that, that fit in um, the work cert space is 12 by 12 I think it's 12 by it's 12 by 11 so the little cutting mats you get the what we call a4 which I think is 11 and three quarters by eight and a half they fit in here uh, we call it printer paper size, but it's A4, um, and the cutting mats fit in, so they're quite good. Um, but it, I think overall, I think it was that's 12, uh, 12, 14, 16. Yeah, it's about 17 by 17, if I remember, 17 by 17 by 14, about. But it fits really nice on a cushion tray. Because underneath there's ridges and they dig, if you're pressing down, it'll ha dig into your knee. So it's perfect with a cushion tray. So that's a cushion, or you could shove a cushion underneath if you didn't have a cushion tray. But I find this actually sits on my cushion tray quite nice. And it raises it up to a nice level. So you're not kind of stooping on your knee. You've got things a bit of a nicer, nicer position. Yes, model makers use them. They, they're normally at model railway shows, but I'm pretty sure that hum, uh, hum, Umbro make one. Um, and the one they make, as I say, have little holes and room for a few little pots. So your pots actually sit into a little, a little moulded hole. But I think they're about £20. They're a bit more expensive. Um, but they're really handy and as I say if you're really lucky your pencil case will sit in quite just perfect um, and your pencil sharpener will fit in the little hole here and then the, the I've got erasers here erasers fit here little things fit in here so you can find any little water pot as well if you had a little water pot not sure if that'll fit in. Now that just won't fit in that airways. Well, it will actually if you push it down. So you could use these little pots. Um, but I, as I, this must be at least ten years old, if not more. If I can find the link, I'll pop it in. Um, I know Umbra make one, um, but it, as I say, it does have. Then I've seen I've seen guys make their own. I've taken photographs of guys that have made their own. Um, you could do it out of a drawer. If you have a drawer, you could take the front off the drawer and you've got the basic things are not going to roll one way or the other. They're going to roll towards you. Um, and then you could put things in it, like the, the little plastic trays. You can get long plastic trays. So you could fit just a bit of blue tack and then you can move them round until you get it exactly as you want it. So I might do that actually because I think they'll be very handy. It's a very handy thing to make and to make out of yourselves. Um, I think I have a, dr a tray, a, a, an ordinary wooden tray and pop the front out if you can find a cheap enough one. Again, that's a nice one as well because it's wooden and you can easily take off the front. Oh, there's a laptop desk. Oh, yes, the other thing I've seen, you can buy the, um, where did I find that? You can buy a cushion, it's a cushion mat, but it's for a laptop. And in the top, it's for your kind of pop. But you could have your water pot in there. 
and there's normally a lamp on it as well there's a little light on it um they're about 20 pounds they would do but they don't i don't think they have a lip so you'd have to have some kind of little tray um but the tray has to have a flat bottom um, but I think if you put like little plastic containers or even wooden uh, cardboard, make some cardboard containers and cover them in your favourite wallpaper, they'll still hold little pots. My daughter made me one years and years and years ago. Lots of little things. I don't know where it is now. See if I can find it. I've kept all the little plates because it took her hours to make it. And then she covered it all in wallpaper and put hearts on it and pictures of the girls and she stood it up made a little tree with the three pictures of the three my three daughters on uh, and that was my little workstation so you can make one to fit exactly how you want to be but um this is quite a handy little kind of little one but it's a cushion tray combined that makes it get makes it not dig into your knees um so if um if i write that down I might put that down for next year to make one before my hands get so bad. <clears throat> um, and post-it notes sit in here as well. But I know I put my father oh, my post-it. You see, my post-it notes are normally in that one. Oops. So I have my post-it notes in this one. Uh, and my pens are handy so we need um, a workstation colouring tray and I stick that on there <laughs> so I've got quite a few post-it notes sitting on here now So let's get back to have a bit of a play with this and I like the fact it's not too long isn't this either it, um, it doesn't take long so half an hour to an hour to scratch the colour in and then you know you can spend an hour a couple of hours manipulating the colour um, and depending on what products you use you could do one page in strong neo colours and use that for the other side. Now, one thing you've got to be careful with, because I've got my ink tents behind, is I've put that on top, and so I've got marks on here now. I've forgotten. So, if you want to do that, you need to put um, some paper or card on there because I love working this way, but because these are so well pigmented, they do kind of leave their coloured marks on things. Um, so I think I've finished this particular bit. I've got two drops here um, and I might do the cherry one again because the port number one because that looks very similar but I might leave that a pearl I think. I might leave that like a white ivory pearl and there seems to be something going on here but I'm going to leave that till last. Oh, I know what it is, a jewel. We've got two jewels there, so of course we've got some gorgeous colours for jewels. Um, and I think I'm going to use the the juniper. Uh, so this looks like an amethyst. So the, the top one will be the palest. And I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll finish this off for a bit. After our rabbit trail. So if this is going to be, oh, sorry about the light as well, my light's going to be a little bit difficult today. That top one wants to be the palest, so I'm going to put a little bit of a colour on here. Um, and then I'm going to put colour here, and then what you can do is, that's once, go over again very carefully, gently too. And I've got twice as much colour on that one than that one. So when I activate it with water, I will activate this one. I will then do that one, which will be paler than that one. And then I will do this one, which is going to be the palest of all. And then that will just give me the highest, lightest highlight. 
and then I will do this one which will be the darkest um, and I think I might want an amethyst on this one so again that's the palest one so I'm going to go second darkest and I'm probably going to put that darkest I think I'm going to do this one again and then this one I'm going to do very carefully three times you get three layers and the third layer is the darkest so again I will do this one sorry I'll do this one this one then this one and then I will activate this one and then I will activate this one and then I'll clean the brush before I go anywhere else because that's going to be quite a strong colour so I've left the middle one and the top one again that's the pale one and if you do it in the same sequence so that's one and that's one now that's two that's two and then that's three so all these are the same sequence so the light is going to look the same because if she was with the jewels here the light would be the same each jewel will react to the light the same way even though they're different shapes but the facet on this side will be pale the facet at the top will be the palest and the facet at the front will be the lightest and it doesn't matter if that was a different colored jewel the same thing would happen and I did that when I did the this one here this is the frog and these are all the same but all the facets have been done the same way but in different colours so the light's going to hit here palest first and darkest at the bottom and then he has a very large jewel here and so that's why some have been left completely clear and that way you're going to get at least half a dozen shades or tones out of one pencil and we've got four, or we've got three, because we've got three layers. But then I added to the fact that we've now got a water brush. That's going to give us another three. So we've got potentially six. Six, six facets is going to make quite an unusual one. Um... So we've got hair coming up here, so I think, well that's hair, and then it kind of goes into flowers. So I think that could be hair. Now I do have some nice browns. So we've done the juniper berries. The other thing to do is just have a very quick look around to see if we can find any other jewels. Um, I think these are rings more than jewels. And we've left these three. But you can do really what you like so I've got three kind of purpley colors there's a dark indigo sorry not good. I've got an um, aubergine and a juniper so there's two purples and then there's a very dark blue um, I think I'm going to use those colors for this smoke so I'm going to put nine ten eleven and twelve these are the greens I'm going to put those back So the hair here, I think I'm going to have, I've got, I've got a chestnut and a russet, they're quite warm, and I've got an autumn brown. Um, now they're quite warm. And then I've got a cool brown, a cocoa, um, and I've got a warm grey, now, and storm, and they're kind of, they're coolish, even though it says a warm grey. A cold grey is very cold, but a warm grey is a warm grey. Um, but it's cooler, it's warmer than a cold grey, but it's it, it, it's nearer the, the cool browns, if that makes any sense. Um, whereas a cold grey would look very stark against a cold brown. So I've got a couple of browns and I've got the storm. Um, I think I use the storm for the face. So I might just do the face next. So when I was playing with this one here, um, I don't have 
a, a flesh colour. Now this storm, I'm not sure what it's going to do. I may leave this, in fact we'll have to have a play, we'll have a very quick play. Storm is a purple brown. Um, and it's very strong, so we'll just have a bit of a play with a water brush. Find this is the number one, and I like the Derwent water brush because it's quite fine, and it doesn't give out a lot of water. It does at first. The more you activate that, it will do. So what we do is we use normally a damp baby wipe, but I use a dry one until it's just barely damp. Now it's it's a warm. It's a warm grey with a bit of pink thrown in. So it's it's a dull pink. Again, it's getting too wet now for that's just you see how wet. The more you play with the brush like this, the more you do this, the more water you get out. So the idea is I have to be a bit careful I don't go through this. I did that on here, look. Oops, again, you want it very dry. If you just Activate the tip. Oh, for some reason this is being too wet now. But this is photocopy paper. And photocopy paper isn't as good as... It just seems to be a lot wetter, this brush at the moment. I probably might use... But it's the Hannah Carlson one, so it should be fine. So... Let's see what happens. I wanted to use this dry actually on this particular. So if you see when I've put extra. So it's not too bad considering the fact the rest of it is going to be graphite tint as well. Um, so I think I'm going to very carefully do that. So that was a bit of an experiment. So we're going to have a, a deep tone skin because we don't have a skin tone. Um, but I think these kind of mystical, whimsical characters can kind of cope with that. So we do want um, here. Um, and again, it has to be a very blunt, definitely no points, very soft, circular motions. Barely touching, barely, barely touching, just scratching the surface very gently. And that's just going to give us a bit of a hint. Oh, that was probably a bit too dark, but that might be okay under there. Again, just that little softest. And I'm trying to keep around the little snow. I don't think it's snow, I think it's freckles, but possibly snow freckles are a bit high. Just the very softest, softest layer of colour. And because we're using the side of the brush, we've not got any harsh lines and it's all kind of even. Now what you can possibly do later is to give us some eyeshadow and a bit of a a highlight on the nose. I don't think I'm going to do anything on the nose. I'm going to leave the nose white. And then when I just take a brush over very carefully. We really don't want any lines. And that's just going to give that. And I'm quite tempted. So if we just put a little bit of a, an emphasis on here. So again, another very, very soft layer just very carefully under the cheekbone we're going to create the 
tiniest bit of a highlight here. So this is the lightest, this is second lightest, this is just going to give a bit of contrast. Um, and the same at the other side as well. Lightest. And she's probably going to have some eyeshadow, probably. And then we can kind of leave that area. And it's a good idea to keep at the same angle, the same hold of the, do it in one. Because if you put the pencil down, you'll pick it up in a different position. And that soft facet that you've made is difficult to get hold of again unless you rejiggle it and you might get a bit of a line and this is a very strong colour for a skin tone so you don't really want to do that. Because we don't want it to look like an umpa lumpa. And again a very another soft layer under there. Just gonna build that that highlight up and again just another little bit here you don't want to make her look like she's got a moustache though because that wouldn't be nice and there's always a little bit under here so I'm going to leave the chin as well And because these blend well with water, as soon as you put that brush to it, that's going to be a very soft, subtle highlight. We've just made a bit more. And if you wanted to build up, this and it comes from the eyebrows we've built up a little bit of something but we don't have a lot to play with because and Possibly maybe a little bit of a highlight under a shadow under there maybe. So I've given the face just a little bit of something. Hi Suzanne, welcome to Benny's Designs. Oh yes, Kenny. No, I can't either. <laughs> I've got to pull my finger out and get get on with it, though. Now I've got a little bit here, and I really don't really want it there. And that was number eighteen. That's storms. It's quite a strongish colour. So I'm going to find my electric eraser. Um, and it's not particularly clean, but in fact, let me just see if I can take that out. The other side, I think, is dirty as well. So it's not particularly clean this one uh, now you can actually rub it onto something erase it on it and it'll take it out but in here should be a little box um, and I do have somewhere in one of these little compartments um, a set of these so I keep these now you could cut this off and it would be perfectly clean or you can leave them for when you do something really dark and grungy and it doesn't really matter if you've got a little bit of color on it so I want to take off this here and because I haven't activated it I can have that highlight on that brow and I can take that off so I can take all that off that I put on because I've not activated it and 
if you think that you've made a bit of a boo boo. You can do that. So we've given that just that little bit. So hi Suzanne, little man will be here in a bit. <laughs> he's been naughty, he's been barking. <laughs> he's been the usual alf. With his little Christmas bell on. We keep thinking it's Santa <laughs> with his sleigh, but it's Alfie. Uh, so the hair, I think I'm gonna go through um, autumn brown and I did want a bit of a a contrast I might go through russet so again I'm gonna have a bit of a play here so we've got number 15 cool brown and then we've got cocoa number 16 and then we've got number 14, Russet. I think the cool brown is a bit too cold. Yeah, so I think I'm going for these three colours. Because that's the, the, the cocoa is, is, is it the, the cool brown is just a bit green. It's a dark olive, I think. It's just got a hint of green, which I don't really want. So I've got my now three colours for my hair. <laughs> yes, Suzanne, he was nearly shipped over to you. <laughs> he was, we, we, we said we were, <laughs> what we nearly did, so I said to Samantha, shall we, shall we, we when we cut his fur, because you know he looks like a little girl, we've cut all his fur off. He's just got one or two little bits left dangling because he's not happy he's got to be asleep when you do him it's too stressful otherwise um i almost thought about bagging up the entire carrier bag full of alfie fur and posting it to you suzanne so you could open it up and have essence of alf <laughs> and then i thought no because you probably wouldn't get the joke <laughs> yes alfie's uh, alfie's half the boy he was um, I'll ask Kobe to bring me, um, how are we doing for time? I'll ask Kobe to bring me my phone for me and then I can show you what he looks like now. He has little girl ears. So one thing you do need to do is to, when you get your colours, is to decide what's going to be a highlight, what's going to be a low light and what's going to be in the middle. And so I think russet uh, chestnut's going to be in the middle so um that's chestnut so that's got to be the darkest one and i am just very carefully putting this in No, I wouldn't go, no, but I've been close. I have been recently, I can't think what he did, but recently he was in the doghouse. He's always in the doghouse, so sometimes it's always difficult to remember what he's done. <laughs> um, even if you just swap the three different colours, you, when, you put your, when you put your water to it, it's going to look fine. Just make sure that you try not to get the same colour next to each other. And remember you can always go back with a darker, a darker colour. Now that looks like it's skin and so does that. So I have to remember that. And remember you can put two shades on this one as well so we've got kind of you can put one layer and then you can put a layer of the other one on top or you can put two layers of the same one so you again although you've only got using three colors you've got 
hundreds of combinations. And I've missed the little fron, and I think that was sage, wasn't it? That was sage. <coughs> Excuse me. Number 12. So I think this is going to be quite nice and muted colours, which is a big contrast from the really bright neos, neo colour twos that we have, um, and the pastels, and uh, the prismalo, and the derwents. Could you find my phone, darling, please? Mm -hmm. I think it's in the lounge. Thank you. Here's the owl. Oh no, this is Dexter. We've got Diddy Dexter. And Dexter's in the doghouse at the moment. So I think we'll call Alfie in and we'll have a quick Alfie cam. Special for Suzanne for Christmas. So I think sometimes my daughter thinks it's a good job that you're not near her because you're not over the pond because Alfie would be whisked away. He's a bit naughty. And he's a knicker knicker. He's he, my daughter doesn't have any any knickers because he just is a knicker knicker. So he's in the doghouse for nicking all her new knickers that we've just replaced. He's a naughty boy, but we love him. You know what they say, somebody has to. <laughs> Not sure what I'm going to do in there, so I might leave inside and just do the outside. But there's lots of different colour combinations going on, so I kind of like that. And I think that's a background, <clears throat> and I'm quite tempted to do a very dark background. Um, I'm obsessed at the moment with um, indigos and there is a dark indigo which is gorgeous and I think that's what I'm going to do with the bat. <laughs> yes, this is the knicker knicker. And tissues, he eats tissues and, and toilet roll, tissues, anything paper. He's obsessed. So he's, uh, and we we have childproof things, and he can still get to them. So <laughs> he's a problem child. There is a lady um, somewhere in England who. People send her their dog hairs when they've cut, had them cut, mainly sheep dogs and long haired ones. And she spins them and makes makes jumpers out of your dog. <laughs> I suppose you could make, oh, this, if I ever bring a colour book out, I'm going to have a spiral back because I can't stand these silly corners here. That's another thing to work on on the new year my mushroom colour books. Thank you darling. So have we got the Alf Master? Could you swap Dexter for the Alfie please darling? Thank you. Alf, Alfie's okay, just right in quietly. Yeah. Well we can, oh. no he's not. <laughs> Come on. One in, one out. Here's Santa. I know, I know, I know. Here's the elf master. Oopsie, my phone, it's gone. There we have. Take a boo! <laughs> Let me pan out, but not with me. Let me pan out. 
So I don't know if you remember a few months ago, a few weeks ago, when I had a, a bungle sleep on my onesie. And he went to sleep. Oh, I'll finish the bath. <laughs> Sit up then. Here's, here's, here's the boy. Here's the boy, Suzanne. With his little girl ears. You're going to be a good boy. With his Santa Bell on. So he's all, he's all uneven. <laughs> it looks like somebody's attacked him with a pair of scissors, which is exactly what we did, isn't it, Alfie? Hmm? Is that what we did? And he's still a lumpy. He's still a big lump, aren't you? Hmm? So this is our little Alf, our naughty boy. But butter wouldn't melt, would it, Alfie? I don't want a castle for the kiss, thank you. So he's still got uneven bits. <laughs> he's got long bits and short bits. <laughs> long bits. He's been attacked by two scissors. Two pairs of scissors. Haven't you? And he feels very sorry for himself. But I did manage to get some neat ears. He's got neat ears. Little girl ears. Haven't you? You're going to be a good boy. You're going to be a good boy, Alfie. And you can't sit there because I have to get to my desk. Go down now. There's a good boy. So there's your fix for the day, Suzanne. The Alfie. Who tried to bite my friend when she called earlier. Because <laughs> he's, he's terrible. He's terrible, Mummy. I have a really cute picture of him. My daughter put the scarf on him and he looked like E.T. <laughs> so that was a quick Alfie camp. Slide off there, big boy. Thank you. Good boy. His little face is... I don't want to slide down, Mummy. <laughs> Auntie Susie says she loves you, Alfie. So if I can really quickly find she did with him. E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home. <laughs> it's E.T. Oh sorry my lights are really bad today. There's E.T. phone home. <laughs> lesson. So E.T. phone home. Oh you've got a mushroom, a, a net soak. It's a cluster of mushrooms. Do you know, I, there's a little shop in Howden. We like Howden uh, because it has traditional little corner shops and they're all individual, um, um, not individual shops, uh, independent shops. And there's a greengrocer there and she has the most unusual mushrooms um, that you've ever seen that are edible, obviously, to eat, to, to sell. Uh, and I think I probably might actually just buy some just to draw <laughs> because... They've got little tiny ones that you couldn't even make out of tiny plasticine. They really don't look particularly um, thingy. Um, and that's another thing I need to do is to get more organised. <laughs> he is precious. He's a precious little boy. <laughs> He's a precious little boy. That's not normally what we call him. We call him a sausage. He's a little sausage, um, but he's very cute. I think she had his, um, I mean, I have to start painting him. He's so photogenic. Um, he just, he's just delicious. I think she put the hat on him as well. He was wearing Samantha's hat. 
He's wearing Samantha's bubble hat. <laughs> so there's a bit of glare going on. But he's a, he is a cute boy, bless him. He is a good boy. And then, this was yesterday, all the monsters together. So there's Gigi and Dexter and little Alfie on the end, snuggled. Oops, sorry, light's a bit, a bit iffy there. Oh, gosh, no. So they were all fast asleep, and that's the dog sofa. <laughs> we're not allowed to go on there. That's the dog sofa. So we've had our little Alfie fix. He might go to sleep now. <laughs> I think you might go to sleep. Oh, I'll very quickly show you my broken birds. This is my tree. Oh, I'm going to have to move. I'll turn that one off. Very quickly. So this is my tree with all my little birds on, and most of them are broken. Most of them are broken. So they might have an eye missing or a wing missing or a tail missing. So most of them are broken. And it's just full of little birds. Oh, that's the elf master. Um, it's just full of little birds. It's an old branch. And it's just full of, of broken birds, <laughs> broken birds with wings missing, and they're all have, they're all allowed to natter to each other all Christmas before they go away. So that's my broken bird tree. <laughs> and then I've do, we've got two we've got two trees. We've got another tree going up. So I'm putting the decorations up slowly um, and if I turn the and that's this is my room at the moment which is going back to being a, a dining room so this is the, the gold room and all my junk in the mirror <laughs> all my junk in the mirror so it's going back to being a dining room hopefully So I always get broken things. <laughs> I just think the poor little birds, they were, they were new until some small child got hold of them and broke them and left them in the shop to, to just be thrown away. And I just can't bear the thought of being thrown away. So they all end up on the broken tree, but it's getting a bit full now. And if you stick the tail into the tree, nobody knows it has a broken tail. It just looks like a little bird. So it goes with our animals, all the broken things, it goes with our animals. We have broken animals and broken birds in our tree. Oh wow, I have to have a look at that Suzanne. Miniature Japanese. Netsuks. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. Well, sometimes they do, Suzanne. Sometimes I ask them to be reduced. Um, they're normally reduced, uh, but some shops have, have asked me for the full price. And and I used to um and ah, and now I don't. I just think, yeah, sorry, you, you're coming home with me. So sometimes I do pay full price for broken things. I just can't bear the fact. <laughs> I can't bear the fact that uh, they're not going to make it on the tree. I've watched too many Toy Stories, I'm sure. So I'm going to go back to messing about filling this up. There's something quite nice about this. Just kind of gently colouring in. And, and not having to worry about what you're doing until a bit later. It's 
So I'm hoping my little mushrooms are going to make an, another appearance, hopefully. I think they're going to have to be probably more of a, a kind of um, a painting to start with. I think it's difficult to go the wrong way around, draw them as a drawing. I think you draw them as they should be and then make them into a line drawing. Whereas I'm used to doing it the wrong way around and it didn't really work. So hopefully we'll get there in the end. And then people can just download them and colour them in. But I'm getting quite used to my little pencil, so I kind of like the idea of having um, some kind of shaded kind of pencil drawing. Um, grayscale is what I'm trying to think. Grayscale. I like grayscale, so... That might be good. No, Suzanne, most of them are okay, but as I say, the last few, they've said, no, the manager won't. Um, they have to go in the bin, and, and that was like, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> but most of them do. But as I say, there are one or two that insist on... Uh, insist that they have to be uh, full price. But not many, most of them don't, so that's quite nice. So, If you make a mistake and you put one next to one, you can put a little bit of a different colour over the top and it changes. And just really carefully, um, just kind of go around and alternate the three, the three tones. Now you can think... Is that going to be on top? Is that going to be underneath? That wants to be darker. Or you can just kind of go for it. I think it's so whimsical, this particular book. You don't have to worry about it. And that's why, again, I like the difference. In the Harry Potters, I want them to look realistic. In this particular book, anything goes. And, and so it's nice to have that contrast. So you've got the contrast in how you use your tools and your watering, your water sort of your water-based products and you've also got how you use them and then you've also got different books for different different kind of um I mean that looks that looks quite warm and brown um, and the one thing I didn't do today and I'll just try this I don't normally try it on the same video, but I think this is not going to make it. Uh, I'm just going to take off automatic white. And I need to put the lights back on. That would be a good idea. It might be too yellow. Be that is nearer the colour. It's warmer. But it's just making that flash out a bit too much. Uh, let me see if I can just take... Oh, that's not so bad. I think that looks alright, actually. That's probably a bit better. I always find it at the end of the video. <laughs> so, again, a little bit of colour. Now, I'm going to leave the hair because it'll make me... Um, Don't really want any lines on this just got to be kind of soft but it doesn't matter with if you do have lines and it's the derwents you don't have to panic because the minute you put a brush on there or probably a damp rigger i'll do is the the color will melt into a watercolor so you never have any sharp lines so i think the color on there is, is quite okay so there's just a few subtle differences and then you can see where I've gone over something twice. So you can pick the same colour or you can pick a different colour. And you can really get some nice darks. Again, I'm not pressing on hard, just a little bit of something just to give it that 
little bit and if you wanted to put a shadow you could put a shadow on it if you really thought that you'd need to so you can do lots and lots of things with these Oh, Suzanne, is that the, um, what was the link for that? Sorry, I'm just. Thank you, darling. Where are you going? No, it's fine. Honestly, I've got it just right now. I think, darling, thanks. I think so. I think it's a bit better. Oh, it's a mush it's a mushroom. Um, oh, does Alfie want to go with you? Do you want to go out then? Good boy. He's had his two minutes of fame. <laughs> Alfie's Alfie's famous. Um, I have this little book here. Um, now you've got to be really careful with wild ones, but there was one little one, and this um, actually they're not in here because they're Japanese mushrooms. I'm getting my brains fried, um, and they're just so tiny. Oh, they're hand carved. I'll have to have a look at that. I'll have to have a look at that. They look really nice. Let's have a look. Hand carved. Oh, I see. They're little car little carvings. Oh, wow. They look amazing. Um, let me see if I can find images. Oh, I like the bunnies. Oops. I like the bunnies. Isn't the bunnies cute? Sorry, the glare's back on because of... Um, that reminds me of... Um, this reminds me of, I also watch, I watch The Saint um, with Roger Moore when I can't sleep. And I also watch Lord Peter Whimsey, which was a series in the 70s, I think, when I was a kid. And one of them was um, one of those little Japanese carvings. Oh, the bunnies are cute. Yeah, I'll have to have a look. It'll keep that for me, so I'll have a look. It's so wonderful a live show because you can it's live streaming because you can instantly find things and answer things and talk about things um, which you can't get if it's a recording. So thank you guys for all your input. So I'd work that way around, but I need to turn the page now um, so I'm gonna actually turn the page anyway because I want to be here but I think I'm gonna do those those purple colors so I'll leave those colors out I'll put them in my little tray so they don't roll away um, so I've got aubergine and I think I'm gonna use the red as well I've got aubergine I think I'm just gonna use three colors I've got number one port, number two juniper, and number three aubergine. So, um, and a very quick scribble will show you port juniper and aubergine. So we can see exactly what they do. And I think I'm going to go for port first. Uh, 
and, and that, that means I'm going to have to make the lips russet. I've just realised that. I was going to do port lips, but I think I'll do russets. And again, just a very soft... This is why I'm not sharpening these pencils, because these are big spaces. When I, If I was doing the little circles, the little snowflakes, I would have to sharpen, just so I'm precise. But I don't need to do that at the moment, so that's good. And then the next one is port, um, sorry, it's juniper. So again, these are going to be really muted colours. Uh, they're not going to be kind of a water-based, watercolour, light to dark, because this is full-on, complete solid colour. And then aubergine, the next one. And I'm going to put the red next because I want the indigo for the dark background. And so I really want a really dark background. So I'm going to have the red. Opposite that blue. And then go around the stars. And the dreaded corner. And I think we need that one in the middle there as well. Just take that right round. And I like the fact you're not pressing hard and there's no blending, which is always easier on the hand. You'll do that with the brush. So let me think what you think about the idea of activating this Christmas e uh, New Year's Eve. And then I can perhaps do that. So there was two purples there, so I'm just going to put a line of red on that one. Make that one just that little bit darker. And another another layer. Unless you want to see anything else on New Year.
Oops. It says boxwood. That's a pretty one. I'm terrible at this thing today. can't use that very well. <clears throat> oh, that's really good. I can't find the, the squirrel. They look really good fun, those, don't they? There's so many pretty ones. One and a half inches, that's so tiny. Isn't that tiny? My lighting is really pants today. If that's oh, that's popcorn. They're so pretty. It's obsessive now looking at them all. The little mice as well. They are so sweet, aren't they? They've, there's an armadillo there. That's a cute one, little armadillo. Oops, my lighting's really gone now. <clears throat> Just bear with me, mouth of the tea. I'll have a look. I bet the mushrooms are so sweet because they just lend themselves to that kind of carving, don't they? So I'll push that one down there. So thanks guys for stopping by. It's been a, a bit of a weird day being near Christmas, I suppose it would be. Everybody's getting ready for their festivities. We always have a really quiet one, so that's always quite nice. Excuse me, gosh. 
throat. So that's that one, and that one's the red one. And of course you have no idea how this is going to turn out. It could be completely pants. Um, so sometimes it's probably better to have a practice <coughs> on a different... You know, do a, do a normal page and then you know roughly how it's going to turn out. <coughs> Nobody's got any questions, pop them in caps. Thank you, for Suzanne, for sharing that. Another thing for collection. All these wonderful things. <coughs> and I have just purchased some... Um, A nativity set. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Which is um, Ladro, the Neo Art Ladro. Sorry, not Neo, Neo, beg your pardon. I've got Neo on the brain. Neo, which is the students, I think that's the students. <coughs> Excuse me, before they pass out to Ladro, I think the, the, the students make things, and that's the Neo. Um, but I actually prefer it. There is a, a Ladro nativity set, um, and I actually prefer the other one, I prefer that one. It just has um, a more traditional feel than the modern Ladro. Oh, excuse me. I started coughing now. Again, that that fire will be different in the other room, so it's not a dry fire. And I'm not really too bothered about this because I know that these gorgeous colours will melt. So if I do happen to get a bit of a line, and you can't always say that with other products, but with the Derwents, normally all their watercolour pencils just melt into the beautiful soft watercolour. So it goes all the way around here, does this. So I'll pan out a little bit. Uh, just bear me two seconds.
Sorry, I was coughing. <laughs> so we have a, a little thing on Facebook called The Marketplace. So, as I say, his, hands, his hand got broken on the way home, but uh, <laughs> and the donkey has an ear missing, but that's why it was the price I could afford. So again, something broken, but I'll fix it. <laughs> so she's coming along quite nicely now. Um, I'm going to have to use the different red. Because I've used, there's an autumn brown, so she's not going to have cherry lips she's gonna have albany red in fact i've just realized about what we can do is we can do both and then we can put in there because she's a bit dark. Oh, sorry. It's a bit darker. <laughs> sorry, Suzanne. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to take the hair all the way around so I'll pan out and I'll stop this video because it, it's probably a, a bit of a waffly one. So thanks guys for stopping by and I'll just manoeuvre that. So we've got that really nice bright purpley colour and then we've got the muted hair colour and then the muted crown, a little bit of face. So. The bat is going to be in indigo. Dark indigo number number four. Um, I've got to remember that, and this is going to be quite dark, so I may need a sharp point on this one. But I'm not doing it too much because it will be a lot darker. So just very carefully scratch round. Just scratch round all the way around so it's going to look quite okay she just needs that little bit of storm I think I used for the ear and I've coloured that bit in there and that was an ear as well I think a bit of ear oh well it's a bit of hair now it'll be fine so there must be a bit of ear at this side as well and that's quite a strong colour is that but it, it'll be fine I'm sure it'll be fine um, Sometimes it's easy to go round and do all the background first, especially with something like this, because it's so easy to go over something and miss something. Whereas if you do a background or you do something big, it kind of sorts things out. So. And I've just got to get this angle right because it's on that silly corner on that edge, which drives me potty. I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure it drives everybody nuts. So if I can possibly get, <laughs> if I can possibly get my colour book out, it will be in a spiral background. <laughs> oh, maybe not a spiral background, but the backgrounds that go black. Um. My mum has a well had in the in the forties, maybe earlier, a photo album, 
and it's it's on a hinge so I'm quite tempted to copy that and it has the old-fashioned um, screw bolts in to take sleeves out so that that might be something to do with our colour books it is dropping to bits at the moment but... So thanks guys for stopping by, hope everybody's okay, having a good natter. Um, again, my laptop's out of sight at the moment, so I'm having to just squint a bit. But once you start getting more and more backgrounds in, um, to th I think that at first I thought that was that, but actually I think we may have to do this. It might have to be solid. Oh no, that was the f that was the yeah. So I should have done this one first, but I can rectify it. It's not too far out because the hair would be so that isn't metal. It's just the wire. But if it gets too tiny, you may have to put a little bit of a point on that. So we've defined the earring straight away. Oops, I've covered that up, sorry. And then if you put this bit in you won't forget to go over the neck because once you've gone over with this dark colour um, you're not going to get it back I think I think that one is a stone but I've lost it now so that's even pressure and of course this jewellery is going to stand out on that background And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. It depends. I think I might leave this bit. Um, because we've got all that hair going on here. Um, possibly it's going to be the hair colour. I would think. So. And I really should practice what I preach and put a piece of paper over there so you get a nice edge, you don't get a crisp edge. That's that one. Um, I think all that's going to be here, and I don't think that's a gap. It could be a gap. No, it's not a gap because there's a so I think that's as far as I want to go with that. So we have, um, and here there doesn't seem to be any kind of shoulder thing going on. 
unless we do this. And I think we can get away with shoulders as well down here. Pretty sure we can get away with that's her shoulder and that's her shoulder. So I think we can get away with that as well. So we've got a little bat um, and I do like number four. I do like this one. So. Um, I'm tempted to just put a very soft dark indigo down there. Because bats aren't normally black black, they're normally a blue black. This would be a good colour for a Labrador, a black less shiny Labrador. They have a blue tint to them, some of them. So we have our bat wings. And again, I think this should be this colour, which I think we used. Um, <clears throat> sage. So um, a little bit of sage on here. So I quite like that. So we've got the metal thing going on. We obviously have to have the jewellery the same. Um, I think I'm going to do the little drop as the cherry and And I think I'm going to do port for the drop. Um, I haven't, don't know, I might leave it white as a pearl. It's got four pearls. Um, over here, I think that's um, the background. I think that one's background as well. <clears throat> it's just really difficult to get to. So, the best thing to do is to turn the page over and then you know you can get to it otherwise if you're fighting with the, the, the wrist and the hand and the fingers and I, ca I can't really struggle into there because That'll have to be a little bit darker because it's the angle that it's slipping off. It's 
one of my pet hates is getting in the crease. So she's almost done. Um, there's the hair to carry on. Um, so thanks for watching. <laughs>